Election results. Breaking. Liz Cheney loses her primary to Trump-backed election denier Harriet Hageman? 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 Per projection. Um, so the last I checked, I don't know whether she, she lost by 30 points or 37 points, some, something like that. It wasn't close, dog. No. It was not close. Um, so why did this happen? I mean, the answer is as straightforward as possible. On this point, the conventional wisdom is correct. It's because she's a crusader for um, holding Trump accountable for trying to overturn the results of Biden winning the election and, and what happened on January 6th. Now, people are pointing out accurately, it is kind of ironic because Liz Cheney supported her dad and George W. Bush stealing an election in 2000. She supported that. It's just she doesn't support this particular election being stolen because Trump is not, he's not highbrow about it and he doesn't pretend. It's very crass and brazen and like in your face that he's just a sore loser and effectively doesn't care what the results are. He's just going to assert he won anyway, right? Um, but that is the reason she went down. That is definitely the reason she went down. Um, so I have here for you some of her, her speech when she, uh, Right when she lost, she came out and gave this speech, gave this speech in Wyoming. Let's listen. Two years ago, I won this primary with 73% of the vote. I could easily have done the same again. The path was clear. But it would have required that I go along with President Trump's lie about the 2020 election. It would have required that I enable his ongoing efforts to unravel our democratic system and attack the foundations of our republic. That was a path I could not and would not take. So look, it, you got to keep it real. On that point, she's correct. She easily could have won re-election, even if she half-heartedly went along with the mob that's saying, you know, oh, the election was stolen and Trump's the rightful winner. Even if she half-heartedly went along with them. Um, she would have won re-election and she would have won easily, but she didn't do it. So now understand something, guys, this is like literally the one issue, the one issue where Liz Cheney is correct. Um, because you know what? Her voting record and 538 tracks this in detail. She votes 93% of the time with Donald Trump. So she is Donald Trump. She's just Donald Trump who believes in decorum and civility, and she believes that in this particular election, he should have stepped aside and done the right thing. So, but you have to keep all those points matter, right? You have to keep all those points in your head. Anyway, more for you. Now, this one, this one is interesting. The great and original champion of our party, Abraham Lincoln, was defeated in elections for the Senate and the House before he won the most important election of all. Lincoln ultimately prevailed, he saved our union, and he defined our obligation as Americans for all of history. Speaking at Gettysburg of the great task remaining before us, Lincoln said that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom and that government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from this earth. As we meet here tonight, that remains our greatest and most important task. Most of world history is a story of violent conflict, of servitude and suffering. Most Okay. So she's saying, hey, look, Lincoln lost elections. And then he won the presidency. And people are pointing out, hey, is this her saying, like, I'm going to run for president? And the chatter on that is getting louder and louder. And she's not exactly swatting it aside. In fact, she's feeding into it. And she's saying, look, come hell or high water, I'm going to stop Donald Trump. But then the question arises, does Liz Cheney actually think she can win the presidency? And I don't think she's dumb enough to believe that. So in other words, I think she might run for president for the sole purpose of serving as a quote-unquote spoiler effect to 
take the election away from Donald Trump versus whoever his Democratic opponent may be. I think she might do that. Now, but here's the problem, right? And this is something not many people are talking about. Is it possible that if she runs as an independent or something and, you know, she can take 3% of the vote and she could take down Trump? Is that possible? Yeah. But it's also possible that since all she seems to talk about nowadays is January 6th, is the rigged election stuff, is a, is going after Trump, it might not work like that. In fact, she might take most of her votes from whoever the Democratic candidate is because there are many mindless resistance liberals and some who might be very wealthy who might prefer Liz Cheney now over whoever the Democratic candidate is. So, I mean, look, if she's thinking, I want to try to take this election from Trump, okay, I salute you on that. That's what's up. <laughs> like, th thank you for your service, right? But if functionally that's not what ends up happening, it's also possible that she just sort of 50% takes from Trump and 50% takes from the Democrat, and it's sort of moot, right? Like, doesn't really have any intended effect. Um, all those things are possible, but, I mean, LOL at the idea that she thinks she might be able to win an election, an uh, uh, election for president. Like, that's hilarious, right? But I don't think she actually believes that. I think it's more... I want to serve as a spoiler effect, and I'm going to stop Donald Trump come hell or high water. But whether or not that will be how it actually unfolds is yet to be seen. So I don't know, man. That's interesting. So anyway, down goes Liz Cheney. Now, we had Wyoming elections, but also Alaska elections. And unfortunately, I don't have much for you on that front, particularly because we have to wait for about a week to two weeks to get all the results because the absentee ballots come in late in Alaska. Um, and But what I do have to show you is this. So ranked choice voting debuts in Alaska special election where Sarah Palin is fighting for a seat in Congress. So they now have ranked choice voting. And the way it's going to impact this race is interesting. It, it makes it a much more interesting race because of ranked choice voting. Former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin is the most notable name on Alaska's ballot to finish the rest of the late Representative Don Young's term, though her path to Congress is not guaranteed, and the outcome of the race may not be known for a couple weeks. Alaska's ranked choice voting system enables voters to choose multiple candidates on the ballot and rank them in order of preference. Unless a candidate's rece candidate receives over 50% of the first vote choice vote, the candidate with the fewest first choice votes will be eliminated, and then voters' second choice choices will be reallocated to the remaining candidates. This process of elimination and redistribution continues until a candidate wins a majority and may be delayed until absentee ballots are counted. Those ballots can be received until August 26, 10 days after the election. Palin, Palin, I used to say Palin, and I don't know why that popped back up now. Palin, Republican businessman Nick Begich, and Democrat Mary Peltola are on the special election ballot for young seat. While Palin, in her first campaign since she was uh, the 2008 Republican vice president, presidential nominee, was the top vote getter in the June primary for the seat, an Alaska survey research poll in July simulated the rounds of ranked choice voting and found that Palin would be eliminated in the first round of reallocation. That's interesting. So she, the, the theory is. If this wasn't a ranked choice voting system, she would probably do better. Since it is a ranked choice voting system, she might do worse. Now, she's not the favorite for the race, but she still has a chance of winning the race. Ivan Moore, a longtime Alaska pollster who conducted the Alaska survey research poll, said that Peltola is likely to get the most first choice votes because Begich and Palin are likely splitting the Republican votes. Do you understand that? So you got two Republicans and one Democrat. The Republicans are going to split their vote. The Democrats are going to have the most in the first um, in the first round. But then when you get to the second round, something else happens. He said Begich would likely win against Peltola after the reallocation of picks from voters who put Palin as their first choice. But that if Begich is eliminated first and his voters' choices are split up, those votes do not exclusively go to Palin. Interesting. Quote, even faced with this evidence, Sarah Palin is still treated like the favorite to win. She's not the favorite. She may well win, but she's not the favorite to win, Moore said. So we got this race. Then we also have Murkowski. Murkowski was a pro-impeachment um, Republican, pro-Trump impeachment Republican. And she's facing a challenger to her right, a Trump candidate. And again, we don't have the results for that yet. But everybody's through to the next round. 
is what we know. But it's still it's still going to be about 10 days until we get the final word on how this election went. So anyway, there you have it. That's the election breakdown. And, um, you know, next time we get the information we're looking for, I'll make sure to share it with you guys. All right, guys, that is the show. I love y'all. Um, I hope everybody has a, a great rest of your, your day and we will see you tomorrow. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.